So we went from this to this. We went from a wolf to this alarm kind of sound. And that same wolf to this, I bramified it. Today is something a little different. I wondered if any of you were interested in learning some things about sound design. And I'm talking about the kind of sound design where you create custom sort of sound effects for use musically. Uh, sometimes sound design might refer to using a synthesizer like Serum or something to create custom patches, or it might refer to the overall sound of a movie or maybe actual sound effects, Foley, that kind of thing, maybe. In this case, we mean Kings and Brams and the kind of thing that's customarily associated with trailer music and film music, or cinematic music, stuff that works well. It's stuff that's found its way into the fabric of, you know, modern trailers and uh, modern film music, Be essentially because it works, because all these various elements like the pings and brams and whooshes and downers and risers and drones, it's stuff that just has been developed and it worked. There's, there can be a musicality to it. I use it all the time. I wondered if you'd be interested in learning a little bit about that and how I did some things, how I created some stuff. Uh, I wonder if you'd be interested in learning a little bit about that whole thing. So I had an idea. Instead of just showing you something that, taking a sound that I created, like I'm gonna show you, for example, real quickly, not exactly the how, but first I'm gonna show you what, I guess, what I did, sound I started with and what I ended up with. I was wondering if you would be up to sending me, putting a link below, like a Dropbox links or something. Send me a, a random sound. I wanna pick a handful of sounds and see if I can experiment with them and come up with something. I'll show you, I started with a, a drum sound made out of saran wrap stretched over a big bowl that I took out of the fridge. One made out of a wolf howl that I got off of YouTube. Uh, I started with nose honks. I don't know if you guys are like this. Sometimes when I blow my nose, things start vibrating and you get a tone. And of course I was like, I wonder if I could do something with that. And I have, I have, uh, I have like an alarm sound. I've used, my nose has been heard on TV. I guarantee you that. Who can say that? Who all can say that? Who can say that? S squeals, clicks, you know, garbage can lids, uh, my shoe squeaking on a sh shiny marble floor in an office somewhere. So, you know, any, any sort of long, or it doesn't have to be long, any kind of sound that has a pitch to it, you can, that you can repitch and distort and stretch any hit, just for example. I mean, this may be a total fail, I don't know. I may get like, no, I don't know. It's just an idea. I don't have a lot of people seeing my stuff just yet, and that's fine, you know? My hope is that if I can continue to bring something of use and value, then other people will find it, and you know, and uh, can have a little community of some sort going. It's, it's like you can't you can't start these things and go well if I don't get to so many. I don't like the word followers. It just sounds too like I'm a leader and you're following me. This should be another word, right? There should be like people that clicked because they have interest in what you're doing. There should be a better word for that. I think. I think followers just sounds a little too ego maniacal or egocentric or because I don't want to feel like I'm someone's follower. Okay. So I was getting into this. Of course, it was like when I was in that zone and, and I had my, you know, you always have your iPhone on you. And then at one point I started carrying a little stereo recorder. Oh, I was on the lookout, like it was on my radar. What can I record, right? So I pulled a big bowl, it was probably a salad. It's like a big bowl with a saran wrap. And knowing me, you know, I'm like, I have to be a little extreme with it. I put it in there like, let's, let's seal it, seal it up. And of course we pull it out and it's like this beautiful flat layer of saran wrap over and it basically looks like a drum. So I'm like, boom, boom. Ooh, I should record that. And then of course, then, you know, then you do that and they're like, man, I'm a pain in my own butt because I've recorded so many things and now I've, I have to tweak them. So I've spent, I've lost days doing this for sure. Um, so, I, so here's example, big saran wrap bowl. And believe it or not, that was the raw sound. It was, it was that. And it ended up, Something I called Drum of Valhalla. Oh, and I use that a lot. 
I started with this. Then I kind of brought up the levels. Now I'm trying to keep the levels relatively similar so it doesn't blast you out of the water. But I brought up levels. I, I, I added some stereoizing, gave it some width. With that, I probably added a little distortion. So I lowered it. And I think I cleaned it up. Cleaned it up. Uh, I had some more boominess with like R bass, Renaissance bass, something like that from Waves. I think essentially that was what ended up being the boom, drum and Valhalla. So we went from this to this. It's very usable. It's a great sound. And it's funny, you know, it's like you'd think I would start from something bigger. I just, you know, it was out of curiosity. What can I make with this? It's like a challenge or something. Here's another thing. A friend of mine posted online. It was it was like a wolf reserve something. It was a YouTube video, like a little show they would do, at, you know, every hour or something. And there was this beautiful big white wolf. It was like it was like, guys, check out this sound. Check out this wolf howl. And I was just like, oh my god, look at that beautiful animal. And and he and then he played it. And the sound that came out was was well, like he, he had trolled everybody because it was like a guy going hey you guys it was or something it was something terrifying and it was so disappointing it was like man that was a good troll but so i had to go find it and this is the sound that it actually meant and this is like a, just a bad like someone's mono you know camcorder or phone or iphone or something people laughing and you know like i think someone it's it was so sweet it was like i think she looked at the audience and said okay everybody howl howl and it, it got it got the wolf started and so he started howling it was it was beautiful it was like oh we're bounding with nature anyway so i took this right and i ended up with this And I've actually used that a lot too. It's just basically, it's a tonal element. It's a little off. It's weird. Like what, you know, what is it? I use it. I've used it several times. You can uh, put it in the background with some, like some a little more reverb maybe if you want to lose it. You just have it come in. So you might call that, you might call that an alarm. Just something that you can either repeat or it can just be a random sound that comes in. So yeah, so we started with... So I took it and cleaned it up, stereoized it, gave it a little width. Right? Cleaned off that ending. Then I, um, I said, what would it sound like if we pitched it up? So we pitched it up. I didn't shrink up the the width, the length of it. It was more like just the pitch of it. And then I found a nugget that I liked in that. Right? Then I distorted it. Then I cleaned it up with uh, Isotopes RX-7. Then we ended up with this alarm that I called White Fang after a book or cartoon I watched with my boys, probably based on a book. About this half wolf, half husky. Yeah, so we we got, we went from the wolf to this. And that. I've used, I know I've used that several times too. Perhaps too, too many times. So it's just like, it's a tonal element that's unusual. Or it could be it could be like a signature sound, you know, in a trailer, something that repeats some like weird tonal element. You're like, yeah, like you don't know what it is. It doesn't really sound like an animal or anything. It's just like an interesting something completely unique, something that no one else would have once I made that. Now, of course, my I call my shameless plugs. I include all of my custom sound design, uh, like 280 sounds in my in my course as a bonus. But that honestly is not the point of this. Um, I just thought 
at one point, I didn't, I had no idea how to do this, and I wanted to know how to do it, and I took a little course, and so I thought it was really interesting to be able to learn like how to stretch and manipulate, and, you know, deal with pitch and distortion and the cleaning up and the reverb and just destroying something and changing it into something else completely. So we went from the wolf to that alarm. So I, I also thought, what would happen if you went lower with the wolf? So that was the cleaned up wolf and I lowered it. It's a little terrifying. And uh, I took a piece that I liked. Like if you're doing like a Bram or a drone, you know, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want the pitch variation that much going on. So I took a little piece, right? And I, then I distorted it. I distorted the crap out of it, right? Then I bramified it. Now I get here now, I'll probably do some different things. I feel like it's still a little too raw for me. We went from a wolf to this alarm kind of sound. And that same wolf to this sort of bram. So my idea was to make kind of a short video. I'll see if, the, if there's interest for it. I wanted to go through the process of showing how I take a raw sound and turn it into something interesting and usable or, or turn it into something less like, here's, oh, here's a wolf. Like you, you wouldn't want to take a wolf cry and put them in your track necessarily. I mean, you might, but you know, that's very specific. Making something interesting, taking some sound, maybe with some either some tonal elements or with a hit or, or whatever, just some kind of recording. If you send me a little nugget of something, send me 30 seconds of something weird, or send me just a hit, or send me just something, some kind of sound. It's great if it has a tonal element. It can be a little squeak. It can be, I've, I've, I've taken like, you know, like a little metal grate that would go inside a roasting pan, scooted it across my uh, granite countertop and had a really cool high, high pitch thing or or scooting a pot across the top of a stove metal against metal sometimes just turning it a little bit you get like a nice squeak you know and you can make really cool things i've recorded beeps i mean an awesome low awesome bram out of like a little oven beep beep it was either an alarm from the alarm system or the beep from the oven or microwave, just like a beep. I thought, what if I took it lower? What if I took that lower? And what if I took that lower? And then what if I distorted the crap out of it, right? It's one of my favorite brands from a tiny little beep. It's really interesting how it did that. So if you would, below, send me some sounds and I'll just have to go through. I don't, I don't know if this may be complete fail. No one maybe is interested. If you were like me, you were fascinated by that. Like I would ask like in forums, hey, how do you do sound design? And they just say like, oh, sound toys. I'm like, great. I don't know what, what to do with that. Sound toys is plugin, plugin developer. And their stuff is great. I definitely use it. I definitely use it. But you know, I didn't know what to do with it. So, but once I learned, you know, enough, enough to create, enough to get started, it was a lot of fun. It was really fascinating. And honestly, here's a cool thing about it. It it taught me to kind of think of like, even in terms of like mixing and stuff, it taught me to think once you have audio recorded, once you have that audio file, it can be just a starting point, even for anything, you know, anything you record, like they say, if you can take a wolf howl and turn it into something completely different, either a high alarm kind of sound or a low bram, then what could you do with, what could you do with mixing a string sound or guitar sound or a drum hit? It's like, it sort of opens up your mind and your ears to, oh, audio is just a starting point. It can be just a starting point. I can manipulate any audio element as needed. And it's sort of, I don't know, I felt like it sort of freed up some reins as far as, you know, you have permission, like, like now that you know how to really tweak and really alter audio, if you need to do that while mixing, or if you want to, just for interest, you can do that. Now you know how, right? It's, so it adds some interest I think it adds, it gives you a little more power and flexibility for options when you're basically when you're mixing or when you're creating music or just thinking, you don't have to think, uh, you know, if you pick a sound, go, well, that doesn't work. You, you can, you might automatically think, okay, now that I have that sound, oh, I know what I'm going to do with it. I like that. I like the nugget of that sound. 
I can send it to the back with some reverb, or I could, I could pitch it up, or, or I like that sound, but it's not in the right key, crap. Or like, well, you're like, no, I could take it, I can force it into the right key, I can make it longer, I can make it shorter, I can add some interesting harmonics with, you know, Decapitator from Sound Toys, or some kind of uh, nice distortion, and you, 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 it opens up, I think it opens up your ears and minds, so... I'm, re I'm very happy that I learned some things about creating sound design. So this would be, I would guess you would call it a sound design challenge. Maybe it's a sound design challenge for me. I don't know. If you would, this may be, look, this may be a fail. If it fails, it fails. Because I don't know if I have enough people to see this that will get involved. You know, maybe it's a dumb thing to do when you don't have a lot of people seeing your videos, you know. If it's a complete bomb, then maybe I'll just come back with, I just have to pick some of my own stuff. But. I would love it if you would give me some something to play with. Now, uh, iPhone recordings are fine. I started with basically with my iPhone because even though it's not it's not an awesome an awesome recording, at least it's basically clean, right? It's not like gonna add hiss or anything weird. The problem so far, it would record in mono, which is not awesome. So that's why I'd have to stereoize it, like with uh, Serum. Serum is has a, an effects option, an effects plugin chain. You can I even figure what it's called. I'm sure I'll end up showing you. So I wanted to try something a little different. I learned a little bit about creating sound design, taking my own recordings or snippets of found sounds or whatever, even some stuff off of YouTube, tweaking and compressing and stretching and changing the pitch higher or lower and creating something completely different and interesting that I've used in my work. I've used it on TV and in trailers and it's really interesting and it's kind of satisfying to feel like yeah, this is something that I made, and now it's a cool, like, musical element, you know? And I made all the, I've made all the standard trailer kind of uh, sounds, the sound design stuff, like, you know, like pings, and brams. I've made a lot of brams, because I guess I'm fond of brams. Uh, brams, to me, are like, they're like, you know, like low brass, but with, like, alien low brass balls. That was weird. That was a weird visual, right? Just the, what the same place you would use low epic brass, you, you put a bram and it's just like, you know, it's like a 300 foot long trombone in the Grand Canyon. And I, I, love, I love the sound. I don't know, I, I love it. Maybe it's because I am a trombone player. Or do I have to say former if it's been so long that I'm not sure if I know where my trombone is? Um, so anyway, I, I digress. I had an idea. I wanted, I wanted to do like a little sound design challenge for me, I guess. Uh, I wanted if you guys would, in the comments below, Dropbox link or something similar. Send me a little snippet of some kind of sound. Just some, like, something, it'd be something with pitch. It can be a voice. It can be uh, something squeaking on the floor. It can be something metal being, I uh, excluded something across a, a granite countertop made these cool little squeaks, a metal pan against a metal grate on the stove. I made little squeaks with that. I made bonks and boops and hits. These little Super Bowl mallets, it's like a marimba mallet, but actually a little Super Bowl. There's a whole sound library somebody made from those. Rubbing them against door or glass or cabinet door, I made, I, I bought some mallets just for that purpose. Once I saw that library come out, it was like called Super Bowl or I don't know. And you can make just cool like, you kind of bonk a surface and start dragging it and it vibrates and it it, it resonates against the, the surface and it makes cool sounds. I've recorded all kinds of stuff once I learned how to do basic sound design and I was just fascinated and so I recorded all kinds of crap. As part of showing you a little bit of the how to do it, I would like to play with some different sounds other than something that I made. So if you would, if you're up for it, if you'll play along with me, give me a link below. Of course, you know, doing that, you, you, what you're, you're giving me and everyone else permission to take your sound and have their way with it. And hopefully, you know, <clears throat> keep it wholesome. Just, but it's, once you post that link, it's up for grabs. But I just, if you'll send me a link down below, any kind of interesting sound with some, with some pitch or a hit or something sliding. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Of course, something usually with a little pitch and a little length is usually interesting. But yeah, send me interesting sound. I've made a sound out of me blowing my nose that I've definitely used. It was a, it ended up being a cool like like a war horn. 
It was cool. It was, it's, I, I'm hoping I can find it so I can show you the actual thing. I don't know if I can. So yeah, send me your, send me some actual sounds below. So maybe I'll do a couple of sounds like that. You know, I'll just have to go through and see what strikes me. You know, I, I just need a few. I don't know if, you know, hopefully you'll play along. This may be an epic fail that, you know, and I regret it, you know, and I'll be sad and be like, nobody wants to play with me. It's okay. It's not the first time. I'm, sh you know, I'm sure that's happened before in my life. Childhood, childhood memories, childhood memories. No, I had friends. I know people. I knew people. I used to leave the house. I used to leave the house. So yeah, that's about, that's about the thing. So play along with me, won't you? Give me a comment below. Give me a link, a Dropbox or something, and send me, send me a sound, okay? And we'll play with it. And we'll see if we can come up with something interesting. So, you know, whatever you want, whatever you want, you know, and, uh, I have actually, I'm not done a fart. You want to send a fart, you know, I'm sure I could make something interesting out of it. I'll just have to try not to think of its place of origin.